tell us? Sandra? Well, Dennis, with the election just over two weeks away, we begin a new series we call Debate This. Each day, we'll take on a different issue that matters. Today, we start with energy, a topic that's near and dear to my heart, but also hits jobs, the economy, and the environment. And joining us now are Robert Bryce of the Manhattan Institute and Dan Weiss of the Center for American Progress. Thank, guys, thanks for joining us on this very important topics we had into the election. I'm going to start sure. with you first, uh, Robert. Uh, can the United States get energy independence for oil? Everybody seems to want it, but nobody knows how to do it. Sandra, it's, it's a good question. It's also addressing what is the single most hackneyed phrase in American politics. Every president since Richard Nixon has talked about energy independence. My third book, Gusher of Lies, addressed the myth of energy independence. Look, why would the United States want to be independent of the world's single biggest market? We're the world's biggest energy producer, biggest energy consumer. We're, we're exporting on the order of three million barrels of refined oil products today. Why would we want to be independent of this marketplace? It's, it's handy political rhetoric, but it ultimately, in my view, it means absolutely nothing. Well, let's go to Dan on this now. I mean, Dan, we've, we've heard over the past couple of presidential debates, uh, Governor Romney supports more drilling. He supports the approval of the Keystone Pipeline. Things that seem like very <laughs> logical answers to our energy dependence problem in the country. Do you agree with, with uh, the governor's energy uh, pr proposal? Uh, well, first, Sandra, thanks for having me. Uh, no, I don't. You know, we all share certain values like uh, reducing our dependence on foreign oil, saving money at the pump, and protecting our children and parents' uh, public health. Uh, Governor Romney's plan will do none of those things. Meanwhile, President Obama's all of the above strategy is actually accomplishing those goals. Our oil uh, imports are the lowest they've been since President Clinton. We're on the road to doubling the distance a car can go on a gallon of gasoline. And we're investing in clean alternative energy technologies as well. Governor Romney, on the other hand, would just uh, go back to where we let the big oil companies dictate our uh, energy policy, and in addition, he would double the amount of special tax breaks the five largest oil companies get. Well, it, uh, Dan, sticking to some of your points you just made, you talked about how oil demand is down globally. Some will argue that's because of the weakness in the global environment right now, but also glo uh, global oil. No, no, oil I said... I said that uh, U.S. imports are down to the lowest level that they've been since right. President Clinton. And, and a lot of that is because we're not requiring that much energy because we're using less in this current economic environment. But also the, uh, the president identified the fact that oil production is at a 15-year high in this country. That's obviously good news. However, Mitt Romney pointed out that's not because of anything that the administration has done. That's because of private business and drilling. Uh, Romney's insisting that oil drilling permits are down 35 percent over the course of this administration, over the course of the past four years, they're arguing that they're actually stripping private enterprise of the ability to drill more in this country. Dan. Well, first of all, uh, Governor Romney again misled when he said that. In fact, under the th last three years of George W. Bush, the Energy Department per reports they produced 1.8 billion barrels of oil from public lands and waters. Under President Obama's first three years, two billion barrels. About 10 percent more oil has been produced from public lands and waters under President Obama than the last three years of Bush. What matters isn't permits. What yeah. matters is production. All right. Secondly, let's go ahead. Go ahead. I, I want to give a last word to Robert on this. Uh, Robert, sure. when, when you look, I, I, Sandra, go ahead. Go ahead. I, well, I, I just uh, regarding all of the above, let's look at all of the above. It's not all of the above at all. In fact, it's a lot of none of the below. Look at President Obama's record on coal. He attacked the, uh, Governor Romney on Tuesday night, uh, and I think in very bad faith. The EPA under President Obama has proposed a rule that would prohibit the construction of new coal-fired power plants in the United States. I don't see how that's all of the above. All of the above, electric vehicles. The, the Congressional Budget Office just released a report that estimated the cost to taxpayers of, of the Obama administration supports for failed, econ, uh, for failed electric vehicle technologies on the order of $7.5 billion a year. It amounts to over $40,000 of subsidy yeah. per electric vehicle sold. This doesn't work. Yeah. Guys, hey, strong, healthy debate. I wish we could continue it. We are going to have more of these. Robert Bryce, Dan Weiss, thank Thanks you so for much for me. joining us on a very important Thanks, issue, especially ahead of the